Hello and welcome. I'm Naomi Esmond and I'm so excited to bring you this special interview with the super inspiring Petra Laranjo. Thank you so much, Petra, for being with us today. Thank you, Naomi. I'm so honored to be here. So thank you so much for the invitation. Awesome. It's wonderful to have you with us. And now to help you get the most out of our time together, let's just pause for a second and presence ourselves in our bodies. So dropping our awareness into our heart, you can put your hand on your heart if you want to, just get in touch with just a beautiful, relaxing sense of peace, letting go of any tension that you might have in your body. Just letting it all go. Beautiful. Okay. So now I'm going to introduce Petra to you, and then I'm going to hand things over to her for the exciting part. Okay, fantastic. Petra is a thought leader in the areas of purpose, personal brand, and social impact. She's a life and career coach, inspirational speaker, published author of Living on Purpose, The Key to Change Your Life and Impact Others, and she's a rescue dog mom. Petra is also the founder of a non-profit organization called Just One Thing 365, which helps organizations and individuals make a positive difference in the world by doing just one thing, 365 days a year, to make doing good a way of life. She has a specialist network of experts and celebrities, and she has been featured on Afternoon Express, Cliff Central, and Real Health Shows, Two Oceans Vibe, 5FM, and East Coast Radio, and in Women and Home, Longevity, Wellness, Entrepreneur, and a number of other magazines. I've experienced Petra's inspiration firsthand, having met her some years ago at a women's networking event where she was presenting on personal branding. My husband and I later filmed and photographed the launch for her book, and I've seen her in action speaking to hundreds of corporate ladies on the topic of internal and external image. She has a great deal of insight to share, and I'm so looking forward to you learning from her too. Welcome again, Petra. It's wonderful awesome. to have you with us. Thank Thanks you. Thanks so much. To kick off with Petra, please will you share a bit about your journey and what has led you to do what you do? Cool. Well, to quote Marie Forleo, and I'm sure you know as well, Naomi, is I'm a multi-passionate entrepreneur. And when Marie said that, it completely struck home because my journey has not been direct. It has been anything but focused, and it's worked for me and, of course, against me. Many years back, uh, maybe even as long as 20 years ago, someone referred to me as a cheerleader for others. And that's always come naturally to me. And it's supported everything that I've done through my life, personally and in business, and across all the titles. So as a qualified fashion designer, then a stylist, then a model agent, then a casting director, a sales manager for Orient Express Safaris, fashion design lecturer, head of PR, so yeah, my journey has been anything. But <laughs> You've done it all, Petra. Oh my goodness, I've ticked so many boxes and worn so many t-shirts. But I think the goal consciously and subconsciously throughout all of it has always been to help people step up into their potential, to help people see themselves as I see them, to see themselves just as able to do so much more than so many times people realize. And then to also help them connect with their worth, to help them step up into their potential, to get unstuck and be able to live a life that inspires them and to create a career that they love so that they can live with impact. So whether it's through the personal branding makeovers, the one-on-one -on -one coaching, keynote talks, whatever I'm involved with, that's really the key is just to help people thrive and step up and live with confidence. Oh, it's fantastic, P. And congrats to you. And thank you for everything that you do for so many of us, because I see that in action around you. And I've also read your book, of course, Living on yes. Purpose, which I thoroughly enjoyed, your stories and the stories of the people that you include in the book. So if we kick off with that, can you explain how connecting with our purpose supports our lives and our businesses? Absolutely. So connecting with your purpose, your why, really brings fulfillment that comes from your core. It's not affected by external influences or events or people, but being connected with your purpose in your personal and your professional life brings immense clarity and the ability to be laser focused with not just what you're doing, but why you're doing what you're doing. I mean, Simon Sinek speaks a lot about it. So does Seth Godin, Eckhart Tolle, where it's not so much just about what you do, but about why you do it. And that's the core of all the work I do. For me personally, in my journey and all the people that I interviewed in the book helps with building resilience, tenacity, clarity, 
you know, we're going to get knocked off the road or the path of life, but it really helps us get back on more effectively. And I think that's really the key is that you're not just letting life happen to you and you're not a product or result of what life's thrown at you, but rather you're creating and designing the life that you want and according to your full potential and according to what you can do to change the lives of others and inspire and serve others personally and in our businesses. For me, purpose really is... It's it. Yes, I absolutely agree with you, P, and I love the way that you've explained that. And it's quite exciting. It's something that has come a bit into my teaching where I talk about confidence on camera and how you craft your message and express that through your photos and your videos. I know that you've been very involved in confidence building also within people. So I'm interested to know from you, from a confidence perspective, just expanding it beyond confidence on camera, which I talk about a lot. Can you give some tips and just some insight into building your confidence in all aspects of your life and your business? For sure. I mean, that's something that I've always loved with the work you do, and it resonates with with both of us. I'm so excited to be here because it is about confidence. If you're confident in who you are, and what you want, you're able to sell anything. And I mean, life is about sales. You know, uh, one of the people I interviewed in my book, Debbie Mergen, who's the CEO and founder of Camelot Spa, she's created this unbelievable empire. And that's exactly what she believes as well, is you're at the core of sales in your life. But you can only do so if you are confident to do it. And the great thing about, I think, what we're doing here, it's not about confidence inauthentically, but it's about inherent confidence that comes from your core, that's authentic in the way that you communicate. So it's not the whole fake it till you make it, which is what a lot of personal stylists and you know personal brand specialists or image consultants say is fake it till you make it. So mm-hmm. yes, there's, I guess, value in that where if you aren't feeling great, you can do that to the point, but in the long run, you'll be found out. In the long run, you're going to feel authentic. And in the long run, people are going to realize it and you're going to lose that potential connection with your tribe and with your audience. So for me, if you know who you are to your core and what you stand for, what you believe in, why you do what you do, you'll be able to step up with that inherent confidence and you'll be able to communicate your message a lot more effectively and a lot more honestly. And I think that's where in this day and age, human connection is so key. It's knowing that If you're coming from a place of, you know, where you're not judging yourself according to what others might think of you, it's firstly knowing who you are, what you stand for, what you believe in. And I think that really helps you take the step forward. Yes, I love the way that you explained that, P. The authenticity is so important. And like you say, there are ways that you can help yourself from a confidence perspective while still remaining authentic. And yes. one being like just that tiny exercise that we did at the beginning, yes. just ways to come love. into your own space. And one thing that I've heard you speaking about a lot is the internal and external mm-hmm. image and really bringing that into alignment. And that's also obviously a very key factor for beautiful, authentic photos and videos, which is the most important thing, as you say. Absolutely. So. Can you give us some tips on how we can best leverage our personal and professional image for our business success? For sure. So your personal brand can be a really powerful tool to use to leverage business growth. And it's a platform that you can use to be noticed, to inspire, to influence, which is what we're all here to do as entrepreneurs, as business owners. Even if you're an employee currently, that's really the power and the potential that you have and the opportunity that you have. Personal branding, really how I look at it, is a tool that you can use. And if used properly, will change so many things for you, will absolutely be a game changer for you. Creating an impactful personal brand, you know, especially if you're the face of your business, which you know, I think a lot of your audience is, is that there should be a common thread throughout your business. So if you're the face and the core of your business, that's where a lot of times the messages get confused because if you're presenting yourself as one person, but the rest of your brand has got its own representation or it's not coherent right through, it does send mixed messages out. For example, you know me, inherently a tree hugging hippie like that. <laughs> Love that about you. <laughs> It's, that's, that's, what I'm, that's how I'm the happiest. You know, put feathers in my hair and my, I mean, like I am today, I guess, dressed today. <laughs> and dog hugging. Yes, and dog hugging and bunny hugging and the whole lot. Just <laughs> give me an animal and I'll hug it. But the, the thing is that my, the audience predominantly that I serve are corporate institutions. So as confident as I am in who I am and as connected as I am to who I am, if I pitched up with this representation to a corporate, 
I would have no impact. You lose the opportunity to connect with your audience if they don't believe that you understand them. And there's a big disconnect, which what I found when I do my corporate talks around personal branding. So they'll pull a few hundred people in and I'm speaking to them about the importance of personal branding and stepping up to your potential through your personal brand and in your business. And there's a lot of people that argue me and say, yes, but you know, I am who I am, so they must accept me. I'm like, well, it's fine and well, but remember that people treat us according to what we project. If I'm projecting a tree-hugging hippie, they're not going to believe that I understand business growth in a corporate sense. And that's where the transformation comes in. That's where the power with personal branding comes in. Really what I say is, yes, first and foremost, define who you truly are, authentically you with no frills. Secondly, is ask yourself, who is the man, well, or the woman that you want to become? And again, authenticity is at the core of this. So it's not about faking it and it's not about trying to become someone that you're not, but it's always about becoming your best self and aiming towards something. And again, that's when your business will thrive is if you are aiming forward and looking forward to evolve. So that's really what it's about is evolving yourself. And really a little tip that I always say is, and something I found really powerful is reverse engineering. And so you can start with looking at the adjectives that you aspire to be. So for example, do you want to be a powerful woman, a confident woman, an inspirational woman, an influential woman? So it's finding out what those adjectives are so even if that's not you right now, mm-hmm. that's okay. It's who we're working towards being and who we're growing into. And then something I found really hits home for a lot of people, and it did for me, is asking yourself, well, what is the legacy that I want to create and that I want to leave behind? That's a bit of a sobering thought because all of a sudden it shifts perspective. I'm like, wow, okay, so if this is the legacy I want to leave behind, who is the person I need to become? to create and leave that legacy. And that really goes to everything. So the way you look, we know that 77% of a person's first impression is solely made up about the way you look and present yourself. And then obviously there's, you know, your body language that goes with it, the way you communicate. You can also look great. So I'm just going to say that here. Yes, you can look phenomenal, well put together, but you've got to be able to deliver the goods, you know, so sure, that does need to be in there. But based on the first impression, is how I'm going to respond and interact with you. And I use an example of, you know, before Michelle and Barack Obama were Michelle and Barack Obama, they didn't look, sound, behave like they do now. And it doesn't mean that they're no longer who they are authentically, but they've had to evolve into being the leaders that they are today. So that's required a change. If you look at Oprah Winfrey as well, you know, Google some images of her back in the day and who she is now. She's a completely different person because she's crafted a personal brand that is coherent, that is professional, that is aspirational. So when we look at her, it's like, oh, wow, okay, she's, yes, she's successful in her profession, but she looks, sounds, and acts as if she is successful and professional. So that's where maybe loosely the fake it till you make it thing comes in because it's saying if you can start building a brand that is aspirational now, you'll almost walk into it as well. I love the way that you've explained that. I actually got goosebumps at one point. I also have an exercise along those lines in my course with regard to up-leveling and getting into next tier you, in a sense, which is something that I also learned from Bonnie Gillespie, who's a casting director in Hollywood. And it's a beautiful exercise. And exactly as you say, it's about imagining that level that you're wanting to step into and stepping into it. And what I've loved so much in my work with photography and videography is when people actually do that and they see the results, it actually can transform the way they feel about themselves and the way that everyone around them perceives them. And there's so much value in that in terms of being able to recognize your own worth and charge accordingly also. Just as you say, it's about moving into that space and first imagining it and then stepping in there. In a leadership role, really, whether you're in corporate or like you say, as the face of your brand, and as many yeah. of the ladies listening here will be. Do you have any examples from your clients who've actually really experienced breakthroughs in that space? Yes. And that's where I get goosebumps. It's really special because that's part of the work that you and I are both in is liberating that confidence in people and transforming the way they see themselves so that everything shifts. 
One of the recent examples that I can share is a man in a corporate setting, financial institution, who's being groomed for CEO status. So he's the head of private banking in one of the African countries. They want to level him up to CEO status, but a lot of the head office exco team didn't believe that he's ready for it. And there were a lot of concerns that he doesn't communicate like you know a CEO, because that's the thing. People hire according to what they need right now, not necessarily according to who you might become in 10 years time. So right now they don't, or they didn't think that he was ready for that because he didn't look sound and act like the CEO, even though he's more than competent, an absolutely wonderful man, so inspiring, so generous in his work personally and professionally. I've gotten to know him over time, but he just didn't look like the leader that they needed. So they pulled me in. So that's why I usually get pulled in on the exco status is when there's, they're stuck, they can't move forward, they don't know what's going on, and I get pulled in there. I always start, which surprises all of them, is I always start with why. Why do you exist? What is your reason for being? And that every single exec that I've ever coached has given me this blank stare, and without fail, every single one of them is blank stare and said, you know what, no one's ever asked me that. Because they start with skills and it might be a generational thing as well where you know back in the day you find out what you're good at in terms of skills and you hone that skill and and you're known for that title so they never actually find out what truly fulfills them and that's why now when they're older they've lost their connection with their passion their love they're no longer inspiring like they may be used to because they've kind of ticked all the boxes they've gotten everything they always thought they wanted So anyway, got pulled in, worked with him for four intensive days, and they pulled me in for the personal branding side of it, the external. But they knew that I did the other work. So I said to them, look, I can't work with you and serve him properly if we're not going to the bottom and we're not addressing the internal stuff first. Are you okay with that? They're like, look, we trust you. Go for it. And I've really got goosebumps. His transformation, he keeps in contact with me, and I bumped into the Exco. Um, based here in Johannesburg, randomly, I was coaching one of the other execs and I bumped into them. And they all grabbed me like, Petra, you have no idea the change we've seen in this man. And they said, you know, we spoke to him on the phone and he was really excited and he was telling us all the changes, but it's different when the stakeholders start commenting. So the feedback from himself, his colleagues, the Exco team, the stakeholders, They've seen a huge transformation in, yes, his personal appearance. And he's been a phenomenal student. He's a class student because he's taken every single thing that I coached him through and he's used it and implemented it. So A, kudos to him because this is his journey and he had to level up and he had to do work, which he did. But some of the other changes that he mentioned as well and which the stakeholders mentioned is there's been a huge shift in his attitude. The way he communicates now with others, which is also part of what we worked with, was his communication and how to communicate authentically and how to connect with people because he was losing that connection. I asked him, how are you feeling now? I was like, oh, I'm so happy. I'm confident. I can walk in anywhere and I feel confident from the second I walk into a room and I've noticed that they respond to me differently. And he actually said to me that they were hosting all the Exco teams because they visit all the different countries. So my client was thrown in the deep end and said, look, you handle all of this. And he did the presentation. He put in the work, the time, and he was conscious of everything I'd worked with him on. And he said to me, you know what, Petra? It's the best presentation I've ever given in my life. And people were glued to me. They couldn't take their eyes off me. They listened to everything. And I was... (laughs) Wow. I was trying to not lose my cool because obviously this is a professional talk we were having, but I was inside. So that kind of, you know, reward when you can clearly see the transformation in someone's life, but when they feel the transformation and they experience it, and it's exactly as you're saying, when they see it and experience it, it almost takes them to another level. That's the experience. We can start seeing it in them, but until they experience it personally, the change is transformational. So when I bumped into the Exco team here, they said to me, it's really good because the concerns that they had previously are completely gone and they're now starting to promote him, which was also huge. So the guys that previously didn't believe in his capabilities are now introducing him proudly and promoting him to everyone else. So they're allowing him to step up even more. Kudos Um, to you. That's a 
fantastic testament to what you do. And I love how you say it has so much to do with how we feel. What we project has got so much to do with how we feel. And what I also always say with regard to also just bringing it back to what we project through our photos and our videos, and in Mm -hmm. fact, through our talks, through live presentations, all of it, it has so much to do with how we make the other person feel too. You know, I adore that quote from Maya Angelou where she says, people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but they'll never forget how you make them feel. And so fantastic that you've helped him to feel that. And you can see the knock-on effect happening around us in terms of the business and life in general and our personal relationships too, which is so exciting. What you focused on there too, which I love, is really just the why and how important this is to all of us. So coming back to one of your core principles with regard to purpose, this is also key in terms of obviously crafting our message and conveying it in whatever way we do that, whether it's speaking one-on-one in meetings and presentations through the camera, on video, in our photos, in our personal brand altogether across our entire online platform too. So in practical terms, can you share some steps with us on how we can live on purpose with confidence so that we can more profoundly impact those that we serve and contribute to that legacy that you spoke about earlier? For sure. Yeah, thank you. That's so important because it is the how to step. You can read everything you want, but until you implement them, you won't have the actual change. The first step, as I touched on before, is about finding out and connecting with who you are. And that takes work because over the years, if you haven't been connected with yourself and who you are, or if you've gotten lost along the way with your identity, which a lot of people I've noticed do, and especially women, after they've become mothers, they kind of fit into this mother role and they lose their identity of who they are. Business as well, when people do well and they start getting promoted quickly, all of a sudden the focus is on brushing up on my skills and all of that. So they start disconnecting with who they are and their essence. So firstly, I always advise connect with and figure out who you are and then who you want to be. So that legacy. So almost reverse engineer it and think of that legacy. Like you're saying, imagine that legacy of one day when you're long gone and people have a eulogy at your funeral, what do you want them to say? That's really, really powerful. So you need to spend the time. It's not going to be comfortable. So I'm warning everyone up front, it's not going to be comfortable because you are going to be forced to shift preconceived beliefs about yourself, preconceived and maybe limiting thoughts that you've had, actions that you've done. So you're going to have to be accountable to yourself for where you are right now. And that is ick and it hurts <laughs> and it's nasty and it's messy, but it's so necessary. What I say to people is, you know what, at some point you're going to be uncomfortable in your life. You're not going to be fulfilled. You're not going to be happy with where you are. And that discomfort is as uncomfortable as going through what you need to do to level up. I love what you said there, it's to level up. So it's saying, you know what, the time's going to pass anyway, level up now because you've got the rest of your life ahead of you. So go through the ick now, as opposed to going through the ick later. I know it's a very professional word, the ick, but it's just... <laughs> the ick. It's it's expressive. It's <laughs> completely. So it's really going through that stuff and pausing and taking the time and as much time as you need to figure that out. And then secondly, which is obviously closely tied with it, is figuring out your why, your reason for existing. Again, it's got nothing to do with the job title. My reason for existing isn't to be an inspirational speaker, isn't to be a personal brand strategist, isn't to be X, Y, and Z. That's just a title. My reason for being is to help every single person that I work with, or even those that I don't, to inspire them to step up into their potential so that they can thrive and create a life that they love and create businesses or careers that inspire them and others. So that's my why which means that in any title that I have or in any platform that I'm speaking on or engaging with, that's key and that's consistent. Yes, I'm human and I'm fallible and I don't always do that. You know, I lose my cool once in a while or this or that, but hey, we're <laughs> hashtag human and that's okay. Yes. It's not using it as an excuse either to get away with bad behavior. It's that accountability again. It's looking at who you are connecting with your I am, your purpose, your reason for being. And then really just once you connect with that value and your self-worth, so your self-value, your self-worth, and connecting that with, which is part of the legacy, how you want to serve others. So our why really comes to life in service of others. And in service of others doesn't mean 
necessarily doing charitable work or being a philanthropist. It doesn't necessarily have to do with that. What it does mean is that, you know, we're all here. How can I serve you in the best way, which is going to change and impact your life? And that's where my why and my purpose really thrives. And that internally gives me a confidence to keep going through the rough times. As entrepreneurs, we face a lot of time. We face tough times. We know this. We've been there and we will again. And that's why when you've, I don't want to say tick all these boxes, I don't be flippant about it, but it's when you've addressed these boxes, you've dealt with them, you're working through them and you continue to work through them. That's when you can really come out stronger, more focused and 100% clear on why you're here. And when you know why you're here, when you know your purpose, it affects your actions, your beliefs, your behaviors, the way you communicate with people, the way you sell yourself, the way you price yourself, you know, it almost squashes that little annoying, critical, limiting voice in your head. So that voice is still going to come up, but at least you're going to keep going back to your why and the impact and the potential that you have to make a difference in this world. I've got that workshop that I've done, that online series, which has got all those questions which people can plug into. There's workshops that support it. I mean, there's so many podcasts that you can listen to also around purpose, Tim Ferriss and Mm. Seth Godin and You know, there's amazing stuff. Simon Sinek, his books as well, my book as well, hopefully, where there's steps there that can help and support. But I think really to get people started and to kick things off is connect with who you are, connect with your why, and connect with the legacy that you want to create. So the impact that you want to have in the world. So those three steps really, yes, there's a lot involved in each step, but start looking at those and answering those questions. If you can answer those questions, it's really going to change things for you and really motivate you and drive you to go forward. Fantastic. Thank you, P. Coming from a place where purpose was the hugest, most missing thing in my life, when I started studying and going into work, I just Mm. had no idea what I wanted to do and no sense of purpose. And it was the most frustrating thing for me. I think I was already about 28 and I still hadn't found this. And I did some life skills courses and I had such a low point after that because what it did is it opened me up to a sense of awareness of my potential, but absolutely no idea how to channel it and where to put it. I'm just so grateful that I, thanks to my husband, actually, I was able to have the freedom at one point to take the time to explore my creativity. It was such a process for me. I wrote my first novel and then I started getting involved in photography and setting up the studio. And it was such a departure from where I had come from at school, where creativity was just not promoted in any way whatsoever. And yet it's like the cornerstone of joy, actually. Absolutely. I 100% agree with you. And it's that creativity can mean different things to different people. So it's not necessarily picking up a paintbrush. For you, it's playing, I'm going to say playing, um, behind the camera and, you know, helping people play and come out of themselves and come out of their shells. And for me, it's playing in people's wardrobes and getting them to have fun and relax and getting out of their heads. And that's exactly the difference between your why and what you do. I agree. You know, and don't you feel that often it, it's tied to some form of vulnerability? For me, it's directly tied to that because for me, I couldn't stand the camera and I hated the way I looked when I was young because of my squint, which I've spoken about yeah. a lot. And it was an intensely vulnerable point. I didn't want anyone to see it. So I spent the first decades of my life with all my might trying to hide it. And so finally being able to come to terms with that and then be able to help other people in that experience of loving how they look on camera, especially, and experiencing that. And it was just so organic the way it happened. It was almost by chance because I did it for my stepdaughter when she was 18 and I wanted her to experience how beautiful she was. There was no thought about, oh, it's going to be my job at all. It just yeah. happened <laughs> that way. Yeah. Then I just instantaneously discovered how incredibly fulfilling it is Amazing. if you're willing to go to yeah. that place. Yeah, vulnerability is a huge one. But also, like you said, it happened by chance maybe, but you'd put in the time and the effort already and you'd been through the low points. That's so I true. think if you hadn't done that, the pieces wouldn't have fallen into place as organically. Putting in that time is crucial and vital because we can imagine all that we want, 
you know, when I was young and I grew up and I studied fashion designer, I was going to be this phenomenal fashion designer. And like I had all these dreams and aspirations. That's what I was going to be. Mm-hmm. And then my mom was absolutely core to my studies. So she was there with me all the time. She was the one that drove me up and down when I didn't have a license yet. She'd stay up with me till three in the morning when I was doing my projects and assignments for the fourth wow. time because of an overachiever. And when she passed away to cancer, because she was so tied to that and I wasn't dealing with the, the trauma, I just I stepped out of fashion design. I wanted nothing to do with it anymore. So I completely lost that. Obviously, in hindsight, what I've realized is that being a fashion designer, I thought was my purpose, but it wasn't. Fashion design is a passion. And mm. that's what confused passion and purpose is they think, well, I found my passion, therefore it must be a no. I've got multiple passions. It doesn't mean I'm going to yeah. chase a single one because that would just be a career. And that's, yeah. that's what I said. I was multi-passionate entrepreneur because I chased so many passions, which, I mean, they've all helped where I am now. And they've all helped me craft my differentiator and they've all helped me have different insights in the work I do. So it's given me lots of dimension, but it's taken me longer to get to where I am because I was chasing my passions as opposed to early on realizing what my purpose was in honing that. So that's yes. my really, really drive for purpose over passion. Okay. Well, I 100% resonate with what you're saying because I'm the same. <laughs> and I also... Go took this very convoluted route and my passion was writing so that was why the novel but there's so much else that like you say in terms of purpose that I can offer in terms of the photography and the video and what actually happened when I created my online courses is I wrote another book I wrote the non-fiction book and then when Penguin really liked it their business editor but Mm -hmm. the concept committee turned it down because they said it's so visual the content that it needs to be online and so after the initial oh you know (laughs) gut-wrenching setback it was like yes this is true because there's so much more that I can show visually and share in person by actually demonstrating the way to show up on camera and to share the beautiful shoots that I've got from my clients online as opposed to just in a written book what you're saying is so true we kind of found our way to our purpose but it can take time so if you can streamline the process fantastic go for it because it will just bring you so much closer to that fulfillment so much more quickly being accepting at the same time of the multi-dimensional passions which are wonderful and that's the thing we can't do without them because it's part of who we are I don't know about you, but when I was younger, and it was a criticism I received from lecturers and different people where they say, oh, what are you doing now, Petra? As if I was scattered, which yes, I was, but they were all aligned with what I loved doing. And back in the day, it was jack of all trades, master of none. And I took that as immense criticism from people. No ways, that's been amazing. I haven't specialized just in one thing because that's for some people, that's what they want to do. They're laser focused on one thing. Mm -hmm. I wasn't that person. And I judged myself for so many years doing it, which was a limiting belief that I had because I'm like, well, I'm never going to be a master at anything. Mm. Where actually, that's not the truth. I am a master of what I'm doing now because yeah. I've got all these interests that have supported me. So with you, your, your writing that you developed this amazing book and now translating it into a program and this for you online. Noams, I was so excited when you told me that you were doing it because it's exactly what you're saying. It's living, it's breathing, it's organic. For you with Penguin saying no to your written book. This is testament to your attitude and perspective towards it as well, because you could have just sat in the corner and rocked yourself to sleep for the next 10 years. That was close. (laughs) (laughs) What I loved recently was going back to Marie Forleo, because I'm a huge fan also. I know we're both B-schoolers. And how she, in one of her recent emails, also shared that one chapter in her book was rejected by her publisher. And she realized, yes, it also belongs online. There's so much more she can do with it if she teaches it in this way. It helped me feel so much better about myself. I actually mailed her straight back and I said, thank you so (laughs) much, Marie, for sharing this because uh, I had my entire book rejected. So I'm I'm feeling a lot better now. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's these things that we can laugh about now and it stings the time. But it is trusting the process, I guess, and taking that criticism from other people. And it doesn't matter if they're coming from a good place or a bad place. It actually doesn't matter. It's saying, well, what can I learn from this 
and how is it working for me instead of to me yes. yeah and another, yeah. another of my favorites is Gabby Bernstein's The Universe Has Your Back. And yes. just coming back to that and just knowing it has your back and it's actually uh-huh. all working out for you. Which isn't always obvious, you no, know. Not. You know, <laughs> eight type personalities, like, and I'm speaking for myself here, we want to design, create, know all the answers, have control yeah. over absolutely everything. And it's like, well, it it sometimes, which is hard. I know it's, it's, it's been incredibly hard. hard for me. Yeah, but it's, it's hard for me too. If we can step back, yeah, and just do the little yeah. breathing and just remember that there's a much bigger plan at play than what we even imagine. And that's the thing, right? You've absolutely hit the nail on the head is that there's a bigger plan that we can ever imagine. And it's yeah. being open to that. And that's yeah. my meditations recently keep reminding me of that. It's saying, you know, yes, I have my moments of stress because I know where I want to go and it's not working out right now, but it's knowing that there is a bigger plan. And we've just got to be faithful and we've just got to be diligent and we've just got to be disciplined to keep going and trust and have faith and hope that it will work out while we're putting in the effort. Yes, absolutely. Well said, Petra. I love that. And it reminds me of your book, which I'm going to go back and read again. Thank you. (laughs) It's been fabulous to chat. Is there anything that you'd like to add that's kind of come to mind for you? Yeah, I think it's really just, you know, to take ownership of where you are and the person you want to become. So maybe step away so much from what you want to do and what you want to achieve, but rather who you want to become and the why of what you hear. And then someone emailed me yesterday or sent me a message yesterday rather from the series that I've been doing. She's been struggling with a few things. I said to her, look, do the series. I'll send you the workshops. And she sent me a message saying, great news. I'm resigning from my job. I was like, oh, <laughs> Wow. This was actually on the on my Q&A Tuesdays is where she came okay. on. And I was like, do you realize you said this online? Should you be saying this online? But anyway, and um, I was like, how are you feeling? And she said, well, you know, she's anxious and she's nervous and she's stressed. So I gave her a few techniques. And the one was about being mindful and breathing and connecting with yourself. So that was the one. Yeah. And the other one was writing down to pen to paper, which is my favorite thing to do. And write down what outcome she wants to get from the conversation. I mean, I said, so, well, what helped you through the series? And she's like, Petra, what really helped me, and this is what I wanted to share here, was so you look at the woman I want to become, so the legacy I want to create. And then secondly, the action that I took, which is what you said, was to look at what I need to start, stop, and change to become that woman. So that's wow. really what I want to encourage everyone to do is, you know, just look at what you need to start, stop, and change with no judgment. It's not about beating yourself up and thinking, well, yes. that's 10 or 20 wow. years studying this MBA or this or then the next thing and what happens if I change now and mm. that's okay because this is maybe the next part to level up. Always those things come into play and they have a role in terms of taking you forward so I agree okay. 100% about being kind to yourself. We're not always. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's sometimes not. hard to do but it's so worth doing. It's so necessary. Yeah. Thank you. So okay. Petra, where can our audience find you and your series that you've mentioned and your book and all the rest? Thank you. The most direct point is my website, which is petralorenzo.com. You'll see that there's a drop in where you can subscribe to my book or you can subscribe and then I'll send you a free downloadable sample of the oh, book. Um, so it's got four chapters. It's got the intro, the outro. So It's really small and condensed, but hopefully through these four stories of phenomenal people that will already start moving you forward. And then there as well, it's got the link to the Kindle version. So either soft copy or Kindle. I love to connect. I mean, you know, so please connect me on social media, Petra Lorenzo on Instagram and Facebook. And then on my YouTube channel, which is Petra Lorenzo Global is where the series is. Thank you for sharing that. And thank you so much for being with us, Petra. I so appreciate your insight and your inspiration. I really do. So thank you. Amazing. And just really kudos to you, Gnomes, for creating this amazing platform. It's so necessary. And so many women have all these insecurities about how they see themselves and how they project themselves. So you really helping them come into themselves is so powerful and transformative. So you can hear that. That's my rescue dogs in the background. Yes, they're saying, Mama, time to finish. So that's a wrap. Thank you, Petra. Thank you. Bye.